before you start working with lists in Excel, you should be aware of a few guidelines that will help you become more proficient as you consider using sorting, filtering, subtotaling, and possibly pivot tables. In order to utilize the entire Excel toolkit at your disposal, your data needs to meet certain quality standards. Now in this workbook, I have the data over here. I can use some of it. It can be printed. There's a lot that can be done. However, if I try to sort or filter the data as it currently appears, a number of features will not work properly. Let's have a closer look at this data set. In column A, we have the full name. Then we have the office phone number in column C. So it seems that column B is hidden. The date of birth. We have the age. Then column F is empty. We have customer since in column G, which tells us how long has this person been a customer for our company. And then we have the contract value down to three decimal places. To begin with cleaning the data, you might notice that row 12 and row 23 are empty. Again, with such a small list, there will be no major issues. But as an example, suppose the list is much longer and there is an empty row every 100 or 300 rows. What if you click in the middle of the data and say to yourself, I want to sort the data. We can immediately see what can go wrong. Let me show you what I mean. Under the data tab, I go in the sort option and see what happens. Excel has selected the data set from column A through E as column F is empty. So if you sort this data, only columns A through E are going to be sorted, leaving columns G to H static. So that is certainly going to lead to inaccuracies in our data analysis. So first of all, we need to delete empty columns and empty rows wherever they appear. So starting off with column F, let me just delete that. Then let's delete row 12. I select, right click, and I hit the delete option here. Follow the same approach for row 22. Right click, hit the delete option. Now the data set does not have any empty rows or empty columns. However, one of the columns is hidden. So let me unhide this. I take my cursor where the column is hidden. And then when it changes shape, I unhide it by increasing the width of column B. So after unhiding column B, I notice that there are some notes in here. So if you want to keep the notes as is, that's fine. But there is another note with no associated data in the line. That's row 25. So let me just delete that. And now let's proceed to sort the data again. If I press the sort button over here, it's going to select the entire data set. So this is also a useful tool that can help us determine if Excel is taking the entire data set into consideration. And as you can see over here, the entire data set has been selected. However, looking at this closely, you might notice that the titles have also been selected. Looking closely at the titles, they do appear a little out of the ordinary. That is, you have these titles that are on two lines. You have full and then name. You have office and then phone. You have date and then off birth. This is not a good idea. If you begin working with this data and possibly pivot tables, or if you are about to insert subtitles, Excel may fail to recognize that the titles are in two rows. So we need to put our titles on a single line. In order to consolidate the titles on a single line, let me show you a simple Excel shortcut. If I go on cell A3, I click on it, and after the L of full, I press Alt and the Enter key, and then I type in name. As you can see, by using the Alt and Enter key, I've made sure that the full name is in one cell rather than this being in two cells. And I can just drag it down. I can press OK here. It's been dragged down. So I have full name. I can do the same thing for office phone. So clicking on the office cell, 
pressing Alt and Enter and typing in phone. Let me just drag this down as well. Press OK. We can do the same thing for date of birth. Date, Alt and Enter, off, birth. Press Enter. Let's drag it down. Repeat the process for the other two columns. Age can be dragged down as is. The notes can be dragged down as well. And we can delete row three now as it's blank. So we have now cleaned up the titles. Let me share a few more Excel tips with you. If we take a closer look at the full name column, we may notice that we are limited in our capability, especially if we want to sort the names by last name or by the first name. So how do we clean that up? We can enter a new column by clicking the insert button and then over here i'll just use the same title full name and then let's say i want the last name to come first then a comma and then the first name so that there's some more structure to the name convention so how do i go about doing that one way would be to just type in the last name comma and then the first name for all these cells, but that is going to be very time consuming. There is a very cool Excel shortcut I would like to share with you. So I'll just do the first name. I'll just type in the last name, comma, and then the first name. And rather than just pressing enter, I'm going to hit this control enter key. And then under the data options, I'll hit the flash fill button and see what happens. And just like that, the same format of the naming convention has been applied to all the other rows as well. So this is a very good time-saving tip. Now we can just delete the first column. And then if you have a look at the office phone, there are a number of different formats that you see. You have the area code separated in some lines, whereas you have some dashes in between the numbers on others. And some line items are without any spaces or any dashes. So the data in this column is clearly inconsistent. So how do we make this data clean? If we select the entire data set in this column, we go back to the Home tab. And then if you click on this drop down under the Number tab, you will see a number of formatting options, but we don't see a phone number option in this drop down. So I'll click on more number formats. I'll go in special, and you will see that you have a couple of options here. You have the phone number and you have the social insurance number. So if we are working with phone numbers, I select phone number, I hit the OK button, and let's see what happens. Now, most of the numbers are consistent. You didn't have to go through every single cell and re-enter the data. There are a couple that are still not updated. So we can manually update these. So now the phone numbers have also been updated. And now we can look at the contract value. This contract value, it's very difficult to read the numbers in the contract value column because there are no decimals, there are no commas. It's simply not clean enough. So let's say that this contract value is in dollars. How do we fix this data set with a click of a button? So I select the entire data set and I press the dollar sign under the number tab. Let's see what happens. The data set is now much cleaner, but let's say we want to deal with whole numbers. So I'll select the entire data set again and decrease the number of decimals using this button. And there you go. The data set that we have right now is much cleaner than the data set we started off with. In this module, we discussed the importance of data quality. Remember, Excel is packed with features like AutoSum, Sort, and Pivot Tables. Using data cleaning techniques such as Find and Replace, number formats, and flash fill, we can clean any data, no matter how large, very quickly.
If you work with colleagues who do not have access to Microsoft Excel, you can request that their data be exported to a text file or a comma-separated value file. In this module, I'll show you how to import that data into Excel. There are several methods for saving a text file. The first is to use a comma-separated value file, which is a file that has a comma between each individual value. Excel has the advantage of opening comma-separated files directly. You are under no obligation to import anything else. Let's open up a comma-separated file. I'll go in File, and I'll open that file by going in Open. I'll browse for that file. I'll show you that this file is indeed a comma-separated value file. I select it. I hit the Open button. The file, which was a comma-separated value, has been opened directly in Excel. One thing to keep in mind is that there is no formatting because it is a text file. Column headers may be bold and centered in an Excel file, but not in this one. Let me close this file by hitting the Control and W button on the keyboard and return to our Excel workbook. You can also open a CSV file by going into the Data tab. And then over here, you see the Get and Transform Data section. You can hit the Get Data button. And then from there, you select From File. And you click on From Text CSV. You select the file. And you hit the Import button. When I click on that button, the Import Data dialog box appears. You can see I have items, customer name, units, cost price, markup, location, category, and length. And you can see that I have my file origin as well, which in this case is Western European for Windows. A comma acts as a delimiter in this data set. And the data type which has been detected is based on the first 200 rows. There's nothing special in this data set. All I've got are numbers and text. There are no dates or formulas. Now I will hit the load button and the data will be loaded as an Excel table into my worksheet. There you go. There's a separate tab and the data is loaded. The queries and connections task pane is also visible on the right. If I go in the queries tab, I will see that there were 50,000 rows that were loaded. And then in the connections tab, there are zero connections. So in other words, I have created a query, but not a direct connection. And now I can work with data just like I would in any other Excel workbook. Please note that when you import data in Excel, you don't just copy the data and then unlink it from the original file. Instead, Excel makes a data connection to the source file. And if you tell it to see if its contents have changed and your worksheet needs to be updated, you can control how Excel updates your worksheet data by displaying the external data ranges property styling box. So let's see how that works. If I go in the data tab, I have the queries and connections section over here. If I go and refresh all and look at the connection properties, this is what I get. So I have the query name. I have the usage. So this table enables a background refresh, which is checked. I also have the option to refresh every 60 minutes and I can change it as needed or as required. I can also refresh the data when opening the file. So there are a number of options over here. I will show you how the refresh functionality in Excel works. Let me just hit OK here. This is our data set. Now, if I open that data set in a separate file, and I change a customer name here. The customer name is John Smith. And let's also change the markup to $40 and the length to one meter. And if I just close this file, on my original file, if I hit refresh all, as you can see, the data has changed. The length is one meter. The markup is $40, and the customer name has changed as well. So by linking your Excel workbook to a data set will ensure that the latest and the most up-to-date data 
is being included in your data set. You just need to hit the refresh button to make sure you're always dealing with the latest and greatest information. By using the get and transform data functionality in Excel, you create a link to a CSV file. This ensures that whenever the CSV file is updated, your data set in the Excel workbook replicates those changes. This is a very powerful and time-saving technique. In this module, we'll look at some of Excel's advanced formatting options. So we have the last name, first name, email, start date, and age, and around 51 rows of data that you can see over here. I've kept this list short to make it easier to see the two commands we'd be looking at, namely filtering and removing duplicate values. The true power of these two commands will be revealed when you have thousands of rows of data to work with. These tools will help us make sure that our list contains no duplicate information. So if we just have a look at this list, you might notice that there is a duplication on row four and row 18. And then we have another duplicate data on row seven and row 26. Because this is a reasonably short list, just by having a closer look at the data, this becomes apparent. But you might have to deal with very long data sets, and this will become extremely complicated to look at every row of data to make sure there is no duplication. That's where the Excel filtering and removing duplicate functionality comes in. When looking for duplicate data, keep in mind that every single column of data within that row must be identical for Excel to recognize it as a duplicate. So the last name, first name, email, start date, and the age needs to be absolutely identical in another row for Excel to identify as a duplicate record. If anything differs in any of the columns, it will not appear as a duplicate, implying that it must be an exact match. This is another crucial distinction to make between filtering and removing duplicates. When you filter for unique values, you will notice that it only hides the value rather than removing it. So it simply returns a clean list of data, whereas removing duplicate data removes the data from your spreadsheet. This is a far more powerful command than simply looking for values that are unique. So if you want to clean up your list, you start by filtering it and then removing duplicates. This is precisely what we will be doing now. The first step will be to look for filtering for distinct values. So let's make sure that we are on the data tab in our ribbon, which is selected over here. This will greatly simplify access to the commands that we'll be using. Also, we need to make sure that we have chosen our table by clicking on one of the cells. So we have cell C9 chosen in this data set, so that's fine. And we'll go on the advanced option that shows up in the sort and filter category, and we'll click on this. We need to make sure that the correct data set is selected. So that's shown in the list range, where it's picking up A3 to E54. Let's have a quick look. Yes, that's correct. It's selecting the entire data set. Now you can either filter the list in place or you can copy to another location. So let's say we want to copy this data set to another location. We'll select this action over here, copy to another location, and then Excel proposes the address where it wants to copy the data. So it's showing up as A57 to E57. We can also change this address by clicking on this button over here. So let's say we are fine to copy the data set over here. So I'll go back. And then we only want unique records. So we'll check this box and we will hit OK. Let's see what happens. So the data set has been populated. Let's count the number of rows. So in the new data set, we have 49 rows of data. And then in the old data set, we have 51 rows of data. So the two rows of data that we identified as duplicates have been removed 
using the advanced filter option. Let's go back to our table. And this time, we're going to filter the list in place with unique records only. Let's see what happens. As you can see, row 18 and row 26 has been hidden. It's worth noting that the data hasn't been removed. It still shows the same data, but the rows have been hidden. This is the primary distinction when filtering for unique values while the data is still present. Let's undo the previous command and recreate our list with the duplicate included. So I'll go back to the Home tab. I'll hit the Undo button. Let's now try to identify the difference between the Advanced Filter option and the Remove Duplicates option. So I will reselect my list. I'll go back to the Data tab, and I'll hit the Remove Duplicates button. It asks which columns I want to compare the data set on. I select all five columns, and I'll click OK. When I hit OK, I'm immediately given my result. So Excel has removed the two duplicate values that it found, and it also tells me that 49 unique values remain in the data set. Let's hit OK. When removing duplicates, keep in mind that Excel is looking for the information that is displayed, not the information that is stored in the cell itself. Let me explain what this means. I'll go back to the Home tab. Hit the undo button. So, one of the rows of data was John Andrews in row 4 and row 18 that Excel currently identifies as a duplicate entry. So, if I just change the format of John Andrews' age on row 4, I'll just put two decimal places. Now, logically, the age is still the same, but let's see how smart Excel is. If I click on the table again, and I go in the Data tab, and I hit the Remove Duplicates button, I select all the columns, and I hit OK. Let's see what happens. Now this time, Excel only found one duplicate value, which was removed. There are 50 unique values that remain. So according to Excel, this data entry is not the same as this data entry because it also looks at formats which are different in both of these cells. In this module, we discussed how to apply the advanced filter and remove duplication tools in Excel. Remember, when using these tools, Excel is looking for exact matches, and that includes exact matches in formatting. This is very important when we are looking at data sets with numbers and dates. Excel is smart, but not as smart as us. As an end user, we need to ensure that the results that Excel provides us is in line with what we are expecting. The most important thing to do when you have a duplicate record or records in a list is to get rid of them, as you probably saw in the previous module. But sometimes, you just need to identify the data attributes, which includes the duplicates in a data set. It might be useful to see the source information together. This list appears to be arranged in a random order. We have the last name, first name, email, start date, age, department, the ID, and the respective salaries of these personnel that are listed over here. Now, we have no idea if there are any duplicates. Let's sort the list. And if you're trying to group duplicate records together, the best field probably is the ID field. You might think that the last name is suitable, but keep in mind that not all people with the same name are the same person, right? So let's sort this list using column D. A quick way to sort this list would be to click on column D then on the data tab and then you have a couple of options here a to z z to a so z to a meaning highest to lowest and a to z would be lowest to highest it doesn't matter uh, let's just click on this button and the list is now sorted let's go through the list and see if there are any duplicates 
So we see a duplicate over here. We have another duplicate over here. And we have another duplicate over here. You can see them right now, but imagine if the data set consisted of thousands of rows of data. Would you want to sift through them then? So let's add a column over here to identify duplicate records. So let me just name this column duplicate records. I will be using an if formula and using that formula, I will compare this data within the cells to determine if the data is duplicate or unique. I4 is left blank because it's the first row and after filtering, you can clearly see that there are no duplicates. I'll start with cell I5. I'll begin by typing equal if left parenthesis and I will compare the data in A4 is equal to A5 and we can even extend the comparison to a number of columns and all you need to do in that case is to include an AND, A -N -D, before writing your comparative formula and then it will look like if and a4 equals to a5 then b4 is equal to b5 and i want to extend this all the way to column h but this becomes very complicated as you can see the formula is becoming larger as i extend the analysis to more columns then I will check the email address as well. C4 is equal to C5. And then D4 is equal to D5. The formula is already very long, but let's see what happens. I'll close the parentheses. And then if the value is true, meaning if there is a duplicate record, I will say that you should check. Otherwise, if the data is unique, I will say that those rows of data are okay. And then I'll close this statement by using the right parenthesis and hit enter. And then I'll drag the formula down. So as you can see, there are a number of line items where the data seems to be duplicated. I can identify four rows of data which are duplicated. Now the formula is already really long. So I need to make the formula crisp because this is a very long formula. So how can I do that? All I need to do is, I will just ask Excel to compare A4 through H4 with A5 through H5, and then I delete the rest of the formula, because I've summarized the formula by comparing the row A4 through H4 with A5 through H5, and I hit enter. And then I just drag the formula down, and I get the same result. Four rows of data need to be checked because they have duplicate records. Now let's say we also want to know how many unique departments do we have. I can either go in this on the filter list and count them, but imagine if you have a much larger data set, that will be very time consuming and prone to error. So what would be a simpler way to just count the unique records in your data set? There is a very simple formula for that. So I'll just show you how to do that using a very interesting Excel formula. It's called unique. So I will just start by typing equals unique left parenthesis and then I select the entire array of department and right parenthesis, enter. And as you can see, there are five departments within this data set. But this data is not sorted. Let's say we want to sort this data. So I'll just update my formula by typing in sort, S O R T left parenthesis, and then I'll close the formula by adding a right parenthesis. And then in order to close this particular formula, this is called an array formula because this is a dynamic formula. So in order to close the formula, I need to hit the control, shift, and enter key. And now the data is sorted.
in alphabetical order. Now let's say I want to count the number of unique records. So how can we do that? So there is another very useful Excel formula called COUNTA. I can use that formula by typing equals C-O-U-N-T-A and then I select the department section, right parenthesis, enter. There are 53 line items in the department category. And if I want to count the number of unique records, I will just enhance this formula by adding unique, U-N-I-Q-U-E, right parenthesis, enter. So there are five unique departments. As I mentioned earlier, these formulas are dynamic. So let's say that we have another new department in this company and a couple of people from that company are going to move to that department. That department is called R&D. So see what happens. If I type R&D over here, all of a sudden, it also shows up in the list of departments and the count increases from five to six. So these formulas are extremely useful because they change when the underlying data set changes. In this module, we discussed some very useful Excel formulas to identify duplicates in our data set. We discussed the compound if statement, unique, and count a formulas. All of these functions can quickly summarize the duplicate data. These functions also help us in quickly determining the most common characteristics in a data set, such as the number of departments in a company. Before you start working with data, it's very important that you have a look at the data and make sure that it's sensible. If you look at this data set, we do have several fields such as the last name, first name, email, start date, age, department ID, and salary. But if you look closely at the data, you will see quite a few abnormalities. For example, the last name is in lowercase, the first name is in uppercase. There are some strange spaces after the email address and even before the email address. And then the salary field has the numerical value and then it also specifies that it's in dollars. So this kind of data, for example, where you have numbers and alphabets within one cell is not very easy to process. So in every cell, ideally have one kind of data. It should either be a number or an alphabet, especially when you look at numerical fields like salary, age, and so on. So how do we go about cleaning this data? First of all, I would like to introduce you to a tool called Find and Replace in Excel. There is a keyboard shortcut for that tool. You just need to hit Control F on your keyboard, and you get this pop-up box. For example, let's start by cleaning up column H which is the salary field. We want to find dollars, but if you look closely at the data, there is a numerical value, then there is a space, and then dollars. So we need to get rid of the space in between the numerical value and the dollars as well. So if we find space, and you spell out dollars, exactly the way it's written in the cell, and then you press the replace button here, and you replace it with nothing, just leave it empty. And you hit replace all. Excel notifies us and says it's all done. We made 53 replacements. Okay, great, that was quick. So the salary field now looks good. We have numerical values and this data will be easier to process. Now, if we have a look at the name, the last name and the first name, we can use some pretty handy Excel formulas to clean this data up rather quickly. So for the last name, let me just work on a new column and I'll call that last name updated. Let me just expand the column width. And then over here, as the last name is all in lowercase, I can update this column and make this all in uppercase, just like the first name is. The first name is all in uppercase. The last name can all be in uppercase and then the data will be consistent. So let me just type a formula here, equals upper, 
left parenthesis, select the cell, right parenthesis, enter. And you just drag the formula down. And just like that, the last name has also been updated. And it's all in uppercase. Or what we can also do rather quickly is if we use another Excel formula, which ensures that the first letter is in uppercase and the rest of the letters are in lowercase. And that formula is called proper. So if I just type in equals proper, left parenthesis, I just click first cell, which is A4, right parenthesis, enter, Andrews, and then I just drag the formula down. So this column, we can call this last name proper. Similarly, we can update the first name using the proper formula as well. So let's just see how that works. We use the same logic, equals proper, left parenthesis, click on the cell B4, right parenthesis, enter, and it's John. You drag the formula down, and that's it. So we have very quickly updated the last name and the first name fields as well. Let's look at how we can clean up the email field. So if you look closely, there are some spaces before and after the email address. We can use the find and replace function here as well. So let's use this column L to update the emails. So what I'll do first is I'll select all the cells within this column that need to be updated. And then I'll hit the Control F key. I just want to find the space and I want to replace it with nothing. Just keep it blank. I'll hit the Replace All key. And there we go. 530 replacements have been made. Now there is another way you can clean up the emails rather than just using the find and replace functionality. So if I just hit undo, go back, all right, we have the spaces again. And I can use a formula called trim. So you start by typing equal, then trim, T-R-I-M, left parenthesis, select the, the cell you want to trim, right parenthesis, enter. And now the formula has been updated. As you can clearly see, there are no spaces in this email address. I don't want this to be bold, so let me just hit this button. So now we have the email address, and I just drag the formula down, and all the formulas are also updated, and there are no spaces in this email address anymore. But the email addresses usually, they are all in lowercase, but over here, in the email address, we see that the first letter is uppercase, then it's lowercase, and the last name you have uppercase and then lowercase. So how can we make the entire email address in lowercase? We have a very similar formula in order to make all characters in lowercase. So let me use another column over here. I'll just call it email lower. The formula is very simple. Equal, lower, left parenthesis, you select the cell, right parenthesis, enter. And now the entire email address is in lowercase. Let's drag the formula down. And there we go. Showing you the various formulas and techniques that can be used to clean the data. Once you are satisfied with the results that you want, you can delete the columns that you don't need, such as the last name and the first name over here. Cleaning data is often misunderstood and underestimated using the find and replace functionality or the trim, upper, lower, or proper formulas that we have in Excel makes your work a lot easier. This also enables you to process data far more efficiently and effectively. It's now time for an exercise to test our knowledge. In this exercise, we have a list of appliances, and we need to use the sort and unique formula combination to find the number of unique subcategories in this list. This is a fairly long list. The sort and unique formula combination can help us to determine the number of unique subcategories. Please pause this video if you do not want to watch the answer right away.
So let's determine the number of unique subcategories in the list. We just need to remember what the formula combination for sort and unique looks like. So we'll use column I for that. So we'll begin by typing equals sort and then left parenthesis. And then for the array, I will type in unique. Then there will be another left parenthesis. And I'll select the array in question, which is the subcategory. So I'll select the line items in column B. I can use the control shift and down key to quickly select the entire array. And that's it. I'll close the unique formula by typing in a right parenthesis. And then I'll close the sort formula by typing in another right parenthesis. So I had two brackets, both brackets are now closed. I'll press enter and let's see what we get. There we go. These are the unique subcategories based on our list. Now, if we have to count the number of unique subcategories, we will use a formula with the combination of count A and unique. The formula goes something like this, equals count A, left parenthesis, unique, another parenthesis to open the bracket, then I'll select the subcategory, which is B6 through B761 right parenthesis to close the first bracket and then another right parenthesis to close the second bracket i'll press enter and there we go so we have 18 unique subcategories in the list if you're not a subscriber click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload to see the full course that this video came from click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.